welcome back to why in the morning if it's tuesday you know how we do it's entrepreneurship tuesday our y254 channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles at michelle ashira is where you can find me across all my social in this particular session we dive into an interview that looks at the art of business branding or but I had the branding of your own business because it's the most important investment that you can actually partake on, especially if you're starting off in a business, even if you have a well-established business, it's something that uh, you continuously you know, rebrand, change a few things here and there. So in studio, I am joined by Edwin Washira, who is the co-founder of Space Rock Designs. He'll be talking to us all about uh, matters pertaining interior design and deco, and we'll be majoring on matters pertaining the art of branding. So make sure you stay tuned. Remember, at Y254 channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles, at Michelle Washira is where you can find me across all my social. Edwin. Yes. Happy Tuesday. Thank you. <laughs> Happy to How are you? I'm fine. Karibu sana. Asante. 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 So, uh, take us through what is like expected of us if we come to uh, Space Rock Design. What is there for us to see? What, is, what happens at Space Rock Designs? Thank you, Michelle, for having me here. You're much, very much welcome. Asante. Yes. Uh, so, Space Rock Design is a small business. I would say small because we are aiming to be to go far absolutely and uh, majorly we deal with the interior designs from design from uh, installation and so on and major we major on windows that is interior designs we are offering services like uh, uh, cutting rods installation of cutting rods cutting soft furnishing window blades and so on mm -hmm. so space log design is a small business owned by uh, two young passionate designers. One is an interior designer, the, the other is a marketing or a branding designer, that is graphic designer. Okay. That is what we normally offer. So we normally major on how we can uh, combine the ideas of interior designer and graphic designer to come up with the, something interesting in our offices and in our homes. All right. Exactly. You've touched on now what the business does and definitely the marketing aspect of it. But for someone who's watching this and they're wondering, what is the difference between interior design and interior decor? Exactly. Uh, majorly on interior design, it is from the idea. Mm -hmm. You come up with the idea or exactly after now the house is done or the office is done. We come up with the, we come and share the ideas with you, with the clients and you see what can be done there. Okay. That's where Deco come now. Right. After you decide, uh, we plan the idea, now the Deco come afterward. Right. So Deco is all about uh, creating these beautiful place, spaces exactly. and design is all about, you know, uh, as you said, idea, yes, partitioning exactly. and everything. Yes. So does one need, what sort of educational background does one need to be an interior designer? One has to get a uh, uh, to, to have a background idea of, uh, of the information of the interior design. That is, um, there's a course by name, Interior Design, which is offered uh, majorly in our area, in our town, they are there. And uh, with that background, you can be able to manage or to get an away on how to get ideas of uh, interior deco or interior design. All right. So basically, as you know myself, we are designers, because in interior there are so many ways one can define himself or herself but from the background with a background of interior design you call yourself a designer and that's where a uh, special designs we are okay so for one to be a designer interior yes. designer one has to be licensed yes. and recognized but for one to be an interior decorator you just have mm -hmm. to be passionate about the whole process of creating beautiful spaces yes uh, Okay, in our country, maybe you are not yet there, but okay. that should be the way. Okay. We have to get uh, a way, like uh, we know, even the engineers have to be licensed. But now, when you offer interior design, you have to have the background information, because it's too bad when uh, someone go and uh, give a wrong information or uh, misguide the client on how to do his planning for home, for offices, and so on. Mm. Yes. No, it's totally not good. It's not good. Okay. Yes. So what is your role uh, when it comes to the company, which is Space Rock Designs? Uh, being in Space Rock Design for the last three years, I've been there to help in uh, 
building the blood, I would say so. And uh, that's come from my background, where major, I majored in uh, graphic design and printing. And uh, later we went to branding. So in space road design, I'm there to help build the brand. And brand, building a brand is not a one-day event, mm -hmm. so it's a process. So we normally come there, we come up with an idea, we share idea with a few friends who are, creative, who are in creative fields. And uh, we help build the brand. That is basically what I would say. Okay. So from uh, coming, coming up with a website, uh, coming up with a social media platform, coming up with a e advertisement and so mm -hmm. on. So you had the marketing department. Exactly. All right. So how long does it take to build a brand when it looks at, for, for someone who's looking at this conversation and they're wondering, probably they're in the stage of starting a business or actually even rebranding. Exactly. So how long does it take to build a brand? Like I've said, it's not a one-day event. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say it, it takes a lifetime, pro it's a, a lifetime process. Because uh, I'm always happy when I see even uh, big companies making their brand or renewing their brand every day, every day, every day. And that's why we, all, we have to strive every day as a company. Even if you are well-branded or our offices are well-branded, you have to keep or to keep learning more on how we can brand more. Mm -hmm. So it's not a one-day event. It's not a, a stage when uh, maybe you are growing. But even when at maturity stage, a company has to keep on branding. Mm, you have to go back to the drawing board. Exactly. Okay, so for someone, because I believe like for for want to get into branding, if you want to brand your company, you have to you want to create a certain uh, image for your own company. So how yes. do you, as a marketer, as a person mm. who has uh, done this for a couple of years, yes. what are your major tips when it comes to just uh, creating uh, a brand which has a favorable image for potential clients? Probably you could give us a few tips. Okay, first you have to understand the the current market or the target market, let me say so. So you have to understand, if you're targeting young people, you have to go with something, or you have to brand something that will attract the young people. You are, if you're targeting a, a certain uh, people, maybe like now how you understand there is middle class there and uh, the other class, you have to know what exactly to offer when you are marketing so that the, the main target can be able to, or can be, can be pulled closer to you. So that is one of the main tip. Then on the other thing, you have to know the product that you're offering. You have to understand your product well or your services well. And uh, also you have to know, like uh, a company, you have to know about your competitors, let mm -hmm. me say so. You have to get those tips and see how your competitors are doing and you try to not to beat them or to fight them, but to offer something unique from them. So whenever you're marketing, whether through e-card or e-advertisement, whether through social platform, whether through any form, you have to make a way to get sure that uh, your product or your services is being se sold better than uh, your competitor. All right, still on that aspect of products and services. Yes. Now, probably if I'm selling product or even services, yes. coming up with different rate card for my services and also pricing yes. for my products. Yes. So how do I determine the worth of my brand? Uh, determine the word uh, by maybe the what comes from there and uh, before that uh, you have to know after your target after you have reached your target how is the response so one is one one way and then uh, the other way to maybe to to know about your blood is to see maybe after your blood is there any response that is coming from the the customers or the so on and also you have to keep on uh, maybe uh, your brand has to be something that is uh, uh, interesting to everyone yes all right uh, take me through back uh, let me take you uh, back to the company okay. space rock yes. i would like to find out what is your niche in the market so that even though we are still having this conversation so that we can know yes. how you're breaking through into this competitive market when it comes to interior design yes um as i would say it's about uniqueness how you offer our services, how you uh, how we sell our product. From the word go, I remember back then when we were starting as a side hustle, we used to just to operate, just to sell something or to make a sale. But after we realized that uh, we have a big brand to grow and to become a, a, a big brand, uh, 
probably maybe over the in the whole world that is our our dream and uh, when you are selling a product our uniqueness is to give the best product from uh, the time we meet our client when you are sharing uh, with them the ideas that you want to offer we start by giving them the best from their houses we analyze the houses we check on their rooms we check on their their likes what they like most from the colors and so on and that's what we normally offer so our uniqueness is for how we our approach is so we approach people differently our client differently i always say there are different uh, type of uh, let me say interior designers there are different type of people who sell uh, let me say like an example curtains mm -hmm. there are people who are suppliers and then there are designers who are us so when you are selling the suppliers just sell the the product as we try to give something that you'll be looking the next 10 years and you're happy that you got the best but you're not just making the sale for you just to get the product or made just to make the sale even when you're offering the services like when you are doing our windows when you do our um, uh, vertical blades for the offices. Okay. We make sure we give you something that uh, in the next 10 years we will relate why this was done. So from uh, from the blades that we offer, someone can understand there was an aspect of understanding the theme of the company, understanding the, the corporate theme and so on. From For the cutting rods, we make sure that you give that uh, something that is of good finish. Today there are so many things, the product especially, in our market. Some are just to and maybe they will not last for more than a year. Mm -hmm. But the product we strive to offer, or the service we, we strive to offer, is something that will stay for years. Okay, what I'm hearing is that you're speaking about quality, yes. and number two, that you're putting your clients' exactly. uh, uh, desires into heart when, when just coming up with these different plans of their spaces. Yes. Okay, take us through when it comes to marketing, and I own a business, and I've uh, you know set aside what I'm bringing to the table, the market gap, the mm. niche. So where should I majorly focus on when it comes to marketing, especially Especially, let's look at especially during mm -hmm. the early stages of my business. Maybe yes. it's a business startup. Yes. So where should I focus majorly on when it comes to marketing in order to attract uh, new clients and also uh, retain the existing ones? Exactly. Uh, first, marketing is wide. And I always tell uh, all our partners who are in business, first of all, the best uh, marketing strategy is to offer the product, the best product. That is number one. Okay. Then the second one is when you offer the best product, how do you relate to the client that you are giving the, the service? Mm -hmm. So majorly it's good to offer an after sale service that uh, will make sure that uh, after you leave to that client, he or she is a happy person. And that person will definitely refer you to the other person. So that is one of the strategies. Before even you go to how to reach many people, first of all, the one that you have, whether you are, I remember our first, uh, first sale was to ourselves. We made our sale to ourselves, so we had to do our, our installation in our own home. So, and we paid ourselves. So from us, what we offered to ourselves, we were happy. And we were sure that when whoever will visit our place, we like that, uh, that product. And uh, that is number one, when you offer a good quality product. Then number two, when um, the, the customer is, is happy and get referral, it's now how you approach. You are, I had talked about the after sale. Mm -hmm. After sale is after you have done the sale, you have finished with that client. As we try to engage our client even afterward to say thank you and so on. And also to get feedback, yeah? Exactly, to get their feedback. That is always our number one process that you normally try to get. You get the, the, their feedback. Then from there after, and now you get the referrals, how you had the, the other client. So afterward, you, our marketing strategy, or how I can maybe help the other person who is starting, is always to show what you had offered. Mm -hmm. There's a, a very unique way today. If you're offering uh, an installation, you show an after and, uh, after and before and after, what, uh, how the place was before and after your installation. That is a very, 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 number one let me say number one way to market yourself people has to see what exactly you do and uh, always uh, a new starter I always tell him or her to always be persistent never get tired to tell people what you do everywhere you go i remember us everywhere 
even after you go to church after you are stepping out make sure one or two people knows what you do in your social media make sure everyone understand the word what of you mouth, offer yes. yes the word of mouth mm -hmm. then from there you reach out to all your friends your colleagues wherever you are working uh, your family members that is always a good way to market yourself when once you grow people will be coming to you you not be there to reach out to them but people will be coming because of how you have been persistent also you have to learn to be very patient you cannot make a sale in a, maybe after our first advertisement maybe we need to make advertisement for the whole of the year one year before we make one, one sale okay. so you have to be very patient a new starter you have to be very patient that one i have to repeat and how was the business during the first year because you guys have been there for approximately now heading to your four for yes, year yes. so how how was the business during the first year in fa our first year was very tough let mm -hmm. me say so and, and how remember, did you guys I remember. Were you able to just be patient? <laughs> yes, we are very patient. I remember even uh, during our first year. Mm -hmm. Our first year, I remember I was working somewhere, so I was not able to be there full time. And uh, my partner uh, was the one who was running the business. You know, our challenges, we offer services. Mm -hmm. So services need people to be there. Absolutely. And I remember one time we got uh, a good project somewhere outside town it was in uh like keep you there and uh it was a big house a hotel and you had to offer all the services in that house and that person who was just available is uh, my partner and uh, i remember that period you had to move around from town to there and you, you remember when you're starting there are so many challenges and now uh, you are somehow disappointed because you never managed to offer the the best product that was supposed to be and our project, project for, from our rates, we'll say it was not very successful. But from that, we learned a lot. We mm -hmm. learned from our mistake from that. And uh, that is what has helped us even from the, uh, the projects that have followed. Right. So every time you have to understand that there are mistakes that come when you're in business. There are failures. There are sometimes you fall down. But you have to learn always to, to, to stand up yeah. and to make another step. There's, there's no failing, it's actually learning. Mm, yeah, exactly. So what would be your advice for someone who has started a business and uh, uh, it's not doing well, things yes. are very tough, and yes. uh, like uh, they had this mentality, in, after I register my business, uh, I'm in operation, I'll be, you know, mm. my sales will be skyrocketing, everything will be just so good on my side. So yes. what would be your advice for that person who is at the verge of just giving up? Exactly to everyone who is starting this one is to you that it's never easy in a business it takes courage it takes someone to be very patient it takes someone to be very persistent so even if the business is not working how you expected you have to learn maybe to make another step you have to learn from those mistakes and uh, redefine yourself see how you or check, look back and see how you can uh, really strategize yourself. See where were the mistake. Maybe your mistake was how maybe you offered the product or you offered the service. See on how maybe you can improve your product. See how you can reach out to your clients in a unique way. And uh, definitely, whenever you give your best, you always uh, get best result. All right. So, and finally, in business, don't maybe look on how to make money. That one I always tell people. Look on how you are going to build your brand. Mm -hmm. Look on how you are going to empower other people. Yeah, and solving uh, problems exactly. in the society. Make sure you empower everyone, mm -hmm. whoever is on your side, whoever you are working with. Look on how you can strengthen your team, the team you are working with. Maybe you have a, sometimes you normally think uh, that a team is a very big team like a, a large working, <laughs> working team. Mm -hmm. But whether you are two or you are three, that is enough team to empower each other. Mm -hmm. So you have to strive to empower each other. And this is the time whereby if you are the, you are the founder, you yes. are the accountant, you, exactly. are, the <laughs> you, are, the, you are the HR. Yes. <laughs> 
and also you are the person to go for installation and so on. But it is. You yes. do everything at yes. this particular point. So I'm, hmm. I'm one person who advocates for uh, business startups. So exactly. I'll still stick on uh, hmm. guys who are starting off in their businesses. Yes. And uh, for someone who's starting off in their business and they're looking at branding and how can they brand on a, you know, a reasonable budget, per exactly. se. Hmm. It, all, it always starts small. But the branding, sometimes we always think maybe it's a big billboard we see on our roads. But having a small business card or a small e-card with the flyer, with all the details of what you offer, is enough for the starters. Then uh, a very unique way is to brand through a social platform. You can just do an e-card and post there. Make sure you are, you are, you are every day someone get to know what you are offering. So for starters, don't just think that you, a, big, a branding is a big something mm -hmm. you see on a road or you see uh, vehicles branded. But that small thing you can brand yourself with is very enough. Make sure someone, if you have a business, you have a registered name of, or you have a business name, make sure everyone is getting to, to get that name. Every time, whenever you once one wake up, get to see your name. That is, uh, for us, I would say that is what you have been doing. Every mm -hmm. morning you have to make sure when someone get to Facebook, when someone get to Instagram, when someone get to Twitter, has to get our names there in, okay. the, name, in the morning. Uh, when you speak about just branding on a budget, yes. most people go for social media, which is an amazing platform. Exactly. Uh, apart from that, well, I like what you've mentioned, which is the business card. I believe most of us, especially young people, we, we don't really think on that yes. aspect of just having business cards. We think business cards, uh, in quotes, they're yes. supposed for, to be yeah. for, you know, big business owners, well-established businesses, but the fact that you've brought it up, it's very, very uh, important. Yes. So when looking at, um, when it comes to interior design, earlier on when you're having this conversation, earlier on, yes. <laughs> you guys were here also, yes. we were differentiating between interior design and interior decor. Yes. And uh, one thing that uh, just caught my attention is the fact that you, out here we might meet people who claim to be interior, interior designers design. exactly. and interior decorators. How can we ensure that we don't get scammed yes. and we actually get to work with a credible uh, company or individuals? Yes. Uh, first of all, uh, for interior designers, uh, they, uh, like, like you said, there's a difference between design and decor. Uh, from the words, you can understand there's design and uh, Deco design is uh, actually coming up with an idea. Yes. Yeah. So we, you sit down and uh, you draw or you come up with a design of exactly what is expected. And deco is now the final result. Yes. And uh, most of the interior designers, or rather, interior designers should be professionals. So they have to be the people who understand the actual thing. That is. Uh, now let me just use an example of the house these are the people who can come in and study the room study the house and see what is supposed to be put here then when you come to deco now deco are the actual things it's an implement implementation of what was designed before so the people who do deco or people who do the final thing i don't want to say that they are not professional but there is not necessary that they have to be from a certain field of that interior design. But interior designers have to get the, the field, have to be well prepared or well maintained with the interior design services. All right. Uh, take us through a couple as you wind up. Take us through some yes. of the challenges that comes with this particular space of business. There are so many challenges. Number one is uh, especially when you are planning because you have to understand uh, the ideas that clients have. So many of the time that you find uh, the ideas that you have are not the actual idea that uh, the client is having. Mm. So those are one of the major uh, challenges that you face because you have to convince or you try to work uh, with the client to be able to understand the idea that you are trying to come up with. Then the other challenge is now the actual thing when implementing. Our market today, uh, we have to get the, like now you work with the uniqueness. I don't want to come and uh, do a design in your house 
uh, the same that I did for another house. So you have to come up with something unique. So even the product mm -hmm. that I market, you have to get very unique product. But you can see some challenges are there. So you find the, the same fabric that uh, were there. 10 years ago are still the ones that are here. Do you feel like your client or potential clients, yes. uh, people who are watching this, if they ever go for consultation yes. in, a, in a design firm, into a design firm and yes. they go, what would be your advice for them before they get into, should they have like a specific something they want to help you guys? Or? Yeah, sometimes we, we like that when someone's come with an idea first. Then uh, we can sit down and share the ideas together. We okay. share views together. So from, uh, from your idea, you can see the ones that can work, the ones that cannot. Mm -hmm. So my advice is, is good, even if you are client, maybe you don't have a background, it's good to get an idea of your house, to know like preference of what you want, like colors or the furnitures that maybe you may prefer. Then we can come and sit with you and see which are okay with you, which mm -hmm. are maybe may not be fitting. Also back to the offices where maybe sometimes you forget because our interior designers are still in the offices. Okay. We always like when uh, there's something a company or maybe a business has that is uh, an idea. Mm -hmm. So once when we come and uh, share with you, we always feel good when before you had an idea, like now maybe you want to partition your office. You have to know maybe I want a, a reception area, I want to have a manager desk, I want to, all those ideas, you just get the ideas. Then as you come and sit down and now come with the actual thing. And come up with the blueprint. Exactly. Okay, so what are a couple of mistakes that you have seen when it comes to branding that probably people should look out for? Especially on branding, sometimes we forget uh, to sell our product well. There are so many ways we have seen our branding and they fail. Because uh, like I said, when you are doing branding, you have to know your target market. Mm -hmm. So whatever your branding, whether it's uh, something, to, uh, something to do with uh, maybe clothing or any, any business, you have to know well how you, are, you, you reach out to the target market. So, so many mistakes are done when you are doing uh, marketing or you are doing branding. Sometimes, uh, it's because people are not aware of their product. So I always tell people to study the product. Even if you are a person who is doing branding and uh, you have been given a business by someone or a business outside there, stay and study their business. Stay and study what they offer. Mm, and try to study to it. Exactly. Uh -huh. So whatever you're offering it can relate to whatever you're offering. Yes. Okay. Cause it's like Funny enough, it's actually transmitted because if you're not as much as involved in the business, yes. then when it comes to marketing and branding, when it comes to just, uh, you know, putting out the message out there, it will be the same. Yes. Mm. Yeah, you have to be involved. In fact, uh, I like when I see a business uh, where there's someone who is on maybe PR, who is trying to sell the product. Okay. So you have to get someone who study or who understand the operations of the business. So when you are doing the final branding, you can be able to offer exactly what is supposed to be offered. Right. But when you just rush somewhere and give someone a job to do branding, someone who is not even aware of what you're offering may be a bit difficult and may, may come up with some mistakes. All right. Yes. Where does the future look like when it comes to uh, the company? I don't want to give a time frame, but you can give us your time frame. So yes. what does the vision look like? Our dream we have been working on uh, five years. Uh, let me say, not a specific strategic plan, but our idea was to, in the five, in a period of five years of, of this time we are growing, we want to see a, a business which has changed the mind of uh, many people, especially in our homes. We want to see a business which is offering uh, offering some solution for some things we see in our houses. So our future is to try and convince people to work on their homes. Many times they forget to work on their homes. So that is the future that you are working on. Then you are looking on a future where a business that can uh, empower young people. Basically I say young people because uh, our field uh, or the interior design business is wide. It's a business that is calling almost all careers. Or professions because this is a business that will call electrician 
these are businesses that will carry painters, these are businesses that will carry carpenters and so on. So we are looking on a business that, uh, on a business that will empower all those people, especially those who are trying to come up. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a business that I believe and I pray that uh, is, will come to offer back to the society. Because all the materials that you use is a business. It's a business that getting from a local market. Mm -hmm. So we believe that in a, in a, in future, a business will be given back to the society. Creating job opportunities. Creating all job opportunities. And right, so, on. so how can people find you across all social media handles if they want to reach out to you to have, you know, this conversation or even be potential clients? Yes. So you are on Facebook. We are on Instagram. We are on Twitter okay. by name Spacerock Designs. Mm -hmm. We have our website that is www.spacerock.co.ke. And uh, we have a phone number. You can give so. me that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that it's that a is business number. Business number. Okay. And that is 0719 818. Okay. And the other one is 0731 mm -hmm. 491. Two nine two. All right. Yes. Thank you very much, Edwin Mashir, for creating so time to be with us talking about the art of business branding. Exactly. Asante sana. Asante. All right. So that is Edwin Mashira, co-founder of Space Rock Designs. We were having a conversation about the art of business branding. So make sure you stay tuned. We have so much coming your way right here on Why in the Morning on Entrepreneurship Tuesday. So make sure you head on to all our social media handles. That is at Y254 channel at Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my socials. So make sure you don't touch that dial. We'll be right back with so much more right here on Why in the Morning.